Half a Life. Luoxana falls in love with a visiting scientist in an episode with an unexpected resolution. <laughs> we begin with Troy giving us the shortest log ever. My mother is on board. Which tells us everything we need to know. But see, I felt like this was an episode where it really assumes that you know the characters and what's happened before. And I feel like we don't get those kinds of intros that much for this show. I'm glad that they're showing some confidence in the audience. And then we get a comedic opening with Picard peeking out of a door before Loxana bursts out of the hallway. He informs her that a meeting with a representative of a reclusive race is about to take place and they need to be cautious with how they handle things. So of course, the first thing Picard does when Dr. Timison beams aboard is stick out his hand like a weirdo. <laughs> That's not even how they normally greet members of cultures that they're already familiar with, so why is he doing it with this guy? Dr. Timison, and I'm just going to point out every time they said his name, I was thinking of Timosil. <laughs> is played by David Ogden Steers, who is most well known for MASH. He's been in a lot of Disney stuff. I also recognized him from Regular Show and Mist 5. And he was John Jones in the Justice League movie. But not that one. That one. His people are trying to save their son and the Enterprise is helping them test on a test sun, which they found. And it took them three years to find it, so they must have had better things to do than a quick Starfleet Google search. And it's taken Dr. Timison 40 years to develop his process, and his only wish is to revive their son before he dies. Loxana gets onto the bridge, even though she doesn't have authorization to be there, so it's good to see that they've stepped up their security measures on the Enterprise. Yeah, she even almost fires weapons. Please, madam. That is a torpedo launch initiator, and it's... And it is Worf, and I'm not Wolf. And later in engineering, she shows up again, and I like how she just throws all their shit onto the floor. <laughs> she shows an interest in Dr. Timison, and he actually seems to reciprocate it somewhat. Waxana asks why they don't just evacuate their planet and find a different one, but Timison says it's their home, and they're not going to do that. And when she offers a nightcap... He reluctantly says no, and it's clear that something is bothering him. And I thought the building of their relationship was very well handled. The Enterprise runs their test on the stand-in star. And I like how they actually made sure that it wouldn't affect anyone else. There are no other life forms present in this system. Spacecraft? None within sensor range. So they waited until right when they were about to do their experiment? I suppose, but it's better than nothing. It's more than I would have expected from them. They were probably hoping there were other planets nearby. They fire some specialized torpedoes into the sun. Which immediately raises the temperature. In real life, I would think it would take much longer to affect a change in an entire star. But the temperature ends up increasing beyond what they were hoping for, and they have to leave before the star explodes. Loxana visits Timison in 10 Forward. Where she tries to cheer him up. But he tells her he is heading home to die. The Enterprise offers to keep helping with the experiment, but the science minister of the planet says no, and they expect Timison to return as soon as possible. Waxana tells Picard about how Timison's people kill themselves in a ceremony they call the Resolution when they reach age 60, which he is about to do. And they didn't know about this ritual because the race is so seclusive. Waxana demands that Picard stop it, but he says, The Prime Directive forbids us to interfere with the social order of any planet. And Loaxana says she'll do it herself. O'Brien refuses to beam her down, and she starts having a meltdown. And Deanna comes in to talk to her. They had a pretty good conversation. I agree. Loaxana shows that she feels bad not only because Timison will die, but because it makes her more aware of her own age and mortality. Which was some good character depth that I was not expecting for her. I also like that they showed O'Brien taking the additional step of locking the transporter before he <laughs> left. Loaxana goes to talk to Timison and still refuses to accept the resolution, and they end up spending the night together. Later, he tells her that the death ritual came about to allow people to die with dignity instead of dragging out their final years without being able to do anything with their lives. But Loaxana still isn't buying it. What you're really saying is you got rid of the problem by getting rid of the people. And she encourages him to stand up and fight for change. The argument goes on for a while, and in terms of actual content, it was probably the best one we've had in this entire show, in my opinion. Well, I thought Yar and Argus <laughs> had pretty deep conversation. Yeah, right before she died. Ended on a high note. <laughs> <laughs> 
I liked that both sides of the argument made sense, and they both presented logical arguments from their own perspectives. Later in engineering, Timmison finds something he missed, and comes up with a way to possibly fix it, but he needs more time. And he goes to Picard to request asylum, because he has decided not to go to the planet to die yet. And the planet responds by sending two warships ordered to fire if the Enterprise tries to leave. Timmison wants to transfer his findings, but the planet has refused to accept any transmissions because of his decision. Because I do not terminate my life, they terminate my work. Alive, I am a greater threat to my world than a dying son. Timmison's daughter beams aboard the Enterprise. She tries to persuade him to go back and argues with Laksana. Eventually she leaves after telling her father that she is ashamed of his choice. Later, Loaxana questions her own actions, and when Timison states he's going back, she finally accepts it. And he tells her that he loves her. He tells Picard he will encourage his people to work with them again, and Loaxana beams down with him to attend his resolution. They hold hands when beaming down, and I was wondering if that would cause any problems. <laughs> but I guess not, because we've seen people carrying other people when they're injured. And in Up the Long Ladder, I think someone was holding a chicken or something, and that could have resulted in a brundle fly situation, which would have been unfortunate. <laughs> Half-Life 3. It finally happened. What an unexpected twist. It was in an episode of Star Trek. <laughs> Overall? This was a surprisingly weighty episode for one featuring Loxana, but I thought it did a good job of gradually transitioning from the typical humor we get from those episodes to what would become the focus of this episode. Dr. Timmison was a well-rounded, believable character, and the conflict of the episode was also well thought out and interesting. The arguments between Loxana and Timmison were really good, with both sides making sense and presenting good reasons for feeling the way they did. I was also glad the episode didn't involve a threat to the Enterprise, which allowed for more of a focus on the characters. If I had a criticism to make, it would just be that Majel Barrett wasn't as good at the emotional stuff as she was at the comedy stuff, but I think the way she acted those scenes was probably also an attempt to avoid feeling like she was going too far out of character, so I thought it was okay. This is not an episode that I would personally gravitate toward if I wanted to rewatch one, and it's not one I would choose if I wanted to show someone an episode of TNG, but I did think it was really good. I gave it an A. I also gave it an A. This whole season is turning out to be pretty good. I also like that this episode gave Loxana way more depth than I would have expected, and I thought her acting chops were strong enough to make it work. I thought it was interesting that she is the reason Timison changes his mind, not the crew, as is normally the case, but she was doing it in the same way, pushing her own personal view on the situation. But by the end, her wondering at the possibility that she was wrong is not something we typically see from the crew. And the fact that she even chose to attend the resolution really gave her character arc in this episode actual meaning. I also like that Timson's reveal of the resolution did not happen right away, though the crew's not knowing about it reason was pretty flimsy. And even though the episode was barely focused on the crew at all, I thought it worked really well, focusing on two side characters. I thought it was a nice science episode where a serious problem that didn't involve the Cardassians or Romulans needed to be solved and had the Federation helping others in a very meaningful way using technology. It was something I would think the Enterprise in particular would do more of. And I thought David Ogden's steers did a really good job. I agree. Not as good as Mist 5, but... <laughs> actually, he was good in Mist 5. I'm saying it like he wasn't, but he actually was. But he was no Braddorf from Mist 3. 